Hi everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we studied about inequalities. Taking that forward, today we are going to look at certain rules which these inequalities follow. So let's begin. What if we are given some real numbers A, B, C? So the first rule says, if A is less than B and we add C to both the sides, my inequality does not change. Now, what does that mean? I am adding C to both the sides. My inequality, which was given to be less than, still remain, remains less than. Same way, if we subtract C on both the sides, my inequality will not change and it will still remain less than. In a combined way, we write it as A plus minus C will not change my inequality. It would still be less than B plus minus C. Now, this is one rule. So, the first rule is this. By adding or subtracting the same real number on both the sides, inequality does not change. Come to the second rule. Now, if we multiply by C on both the sides, that is, if we multiply by C, A into C, this is my left hand side, right hand side is BC. The inequality will not change provided C is positive. And inequality changes on multiplying by C if my C is negative. So here C greater than 0 means C is positive. C less than 0 means C is negative. Inequality will accordingly change. Come to the third rule. It says given A is less than B, if we invert A, we'll get 1 by A and we invert B, we'll get 1 by B. Then the inequality changes provided both a and B have positive sign or both have negative sign. So, inequality changes. Now, all this will be clear when we do some examples. So, let us see. Here, we are given, in the first example, 1 is less than 2. Now, add 5 on both the sides. What will my left-hand side be? Left-hand side, side will be 1 plus 5, which is 6. And what is my right-hand side? That will be 2 plus 5, or it becomes 7. And you see that 6 is less than 7. So, what have we done? We have added 1 or I'll write it as we were given 1 is less than 2. We are adding 5 on both the sides. My inequality still remains the same. Look at the second example here. We are given 1 is less than 2. Now subtract 2 on both the sides. So what does the left hand side become? It becomes 1 minus 2, which is nothing but minus 1. And right hand side becomes 2 minus 2, which is 0. You know that minus 1 is less than 0. We did this when we did our number line. I'll repeat once again. On the number line, we have 0, 1, 2 on the right. On the left, we have minus 1, minus 2. That is how the numbers go. As we move towards the left, my numbers become smaller. So, minus 2 is smaller than minus 1. 
minus 1 is smaller than 0, 0 is smaller than 1, that is how it goes. So, minus 1 is smaller than 0. My inequality did not change. Come to the third example. We are given 3 is less than 5. Now, multiply by 2 on both the sides. So, what does my left hand side become? 3 into 2, which is 6. What does the right hand side become? 5 into 2, which is 10. Now, you know that 6 is less than 10. So, the inequality did not change. As 2 was positive, I'll write here, inequality remains same as 2 was positive. Now, let's see, if we'll multiply by minus 2, what will happen? So, we are given, we have left hand side as left hand side is 3 into minus 2, which is minus 6. And the right hand side is 5 into minus 2 which is minus 10. So, you know that our minus 6 is greater than minus 10. Why? Because here, if we take this to be 0 and let us say minus 6 is here, the minus 10 is somewhere here. And you know that as we are moving in this direction, in the left direction, my numbers are becoming smaller. So, minus 6 is greater than minus 10. So, you saw we had our inequality less than here. In the question, it was less than. But now, after multiplying by minus 2, the inequality changed. So, this happened only because minus 2 was negative. Inequality, I'll just put a star here, inequality changed as 2 minus 2 was negative. So, let's look at the last example. Uh, no, not the last. Given 1 is less than 3. Let's invert this. If we invert, we'll get left hand side as 1 by 1 and the right hand side will be 1 by 3. Now, our 1 by 1 is nothing but 1 and 1 by 3 you know in decimal representation is 0 0.3333. So, isn't 1 greater than 0 0.3333 or isn't 1 greater than 1 by 3? So, what has happened? 1 are less than, the inequality was 1 is less than 3. On inverting, it, become great. it becomes greater than. So, all these examples which we took there, we were taking 1 is less than 2, so that less than inequality was there. But all these inequalities hold even if you have a greater than sign. So, here we have taken 5 is greater than 3. Uh, what shall we do? Let us multiply by, say, minus 5. So, what will happen? When we multiply by minus 5, we'll have 5 into minus 5, which is minus 25. And this is a left-hand side. Right-hand side will become 3 into minus 5, which is minus 15. Now, you know that minus 25 is less than minus 15. On the number line, minus 25 
is here, minus 15 will be here. So, minus 15 is greater. You see the open side of the arrow is towards minus 15. So, that is greater than minus 25. What has happened? Our inequality has changed. We had greater than sign. Now, it becomes less than. So, it's not that all the time we have less than sign in the given uh, questions. We can always have greater sign also. Moving on to a very important concept of modulus function. Now, this we would also be doing when we do functions, but here it is very much needed. So, what is a modulus function? Now, modulus function is represented by two parallel bars. So, when we say mod of x, it means this is a modulus function of x. Mathematically, this means mod of x will be x if x is positive and mod of x will be minus x when x is less than 0. For a layman, if you have to explain, it means whatever is inside the parallel lines comes out positive. Positive. Now, so let's look at some examples. Mod of 2 will be 2. Mod of half will be half. It's not that all the time we are taking whole numbers or integers. You can have fractions also inside a modulus function. Mod of 3 minus 3 would be again 3. So, as I said, whatever is inside the parallel lines comes out positive. Minus of half would be half. So, why does it happen? Because here in the definition you saw mod of x is minus of x when x is negative. So, actually what is happening? Let's take mod of minus 3. So, this is minus of minus 3. So, it is always positive. Now, there are certain rules which this modulus function follows which we need to know. What are those rules? The first one. The first rule is mod of x, y will always be mod of x, mod of y. That is, it is distributive. Second rule says mod of x upon y will always be mod of x upon mod of y. The third rule, which is a little different, is the triangle inequality. Mod of x plus minus y will always be less than or equal to mod of x plus mod of y. You have to pay attention. This is known as the triangle inequality and this inequality is very important and it is used in so many different branches even in calculus you will come across this triangle in equality now so here it says that whether you have a sum or difference of any two numbers it will always be less than equal to mod of x plus mod of y. Let's look at some examples. The first one. What if... Uh, one more rule is there. Let me write that and then we will start the examples. The fourth rule, but this is something you would be using when we come to solving mod of x is less than c means x is less than c and x is greater than minus c. What if we have 
mod of x is less than equal to c, then that would imply x is less than equal to c, greater than equal to minus c. Now, this is also important and the triangle inequality is also important. These two we would be using. Let's come to some examples. So, first one. Let's say x is 2 and y is 3. Then mod of 2 into 3, you know, is mod of 6, which is 6. And what is mod of 2 into mod of 3? That is nothing but 2 into 3 and that is also 6. So what did we do? We confirmed mod of 2 into 3 is equal to mod 2 into mod of 3. Look at the other example. What if I take let x be 2 and y be minus 2. Then our mod of 2 into minus 2 will be mod of minus 4. Now what do you say? Is it going to be 4 or minus 4? It will be 4 because whatever, whether we have a positive number or a negative number inside the bars, it comes out positive. Look at mod of 2 into mod of minus 2. That will also be 2 and mod of minus 2 is also 2 so this is also 4. So we, even if we have the numbers to be negative, our mod of 2 into minus 2 is equal to mod of 2 into mod of minus 2. We have confirmed this rule also. Look at the triangle inequality. What if, let's say, x be 2 and y be 3. Then, mod of 2 plus 3, you know, is mod of 5, which is 5. And, what is mod of, this was mod of x plus y. What is mod of x? That is mod of 2, and the, which is nothing but 2. What is mod of y? That's mod of 3 and which is 3. So here in our case, mod of x plus mod of y is nothing but 2 plus 3 which is 5. So we have mod of 2 plus 3 is equal to mod of 2 plus mod of 3. You would argue. How come we have an equality when there we had less than equal to? So guys, either we can have less than or we can have equal. For our example, it is equality which we are taking. So in this case, it is the equality. From the triangle inequality, x plus y is less than equal to mod x plus mod of y. We have this case, the equality. Now come to what happens when we have a negative number? Let x be 2 and y be minus 3. In that case, our mod of x plus y would become mod of x plus, oh sorry, mod of uh, 2 plus minus 3 which is nothing but 2 minus 3 or it is mod of minus 1 and you know mod of minus 1 would be nothing but 1 which we saw from the modulus function. Now let's see what is mod of uh, x plus mod of y that would be mod of 2 plus mod of minus 3 and this is nothing but 2 and minus 3, the modulus of minus 3 will be 3. So this becomes 5. Now don't you see mod of 2 minus 3 is less than mod of 2 plus mod of minus 3. 
we saw 1 is less than 5. So here, this is mod of minus 1, which is less than mod of, uh, this is 2 plus 3. So we have 1 is less than 5. So the less than part of the inequality holds here. So a quick recap, guys. We did three rules, which the inequalities follow. You did if A, B, C are some real numbers, then if we are given and A is less than B, then the first rule said A plus minus B is still less than A plus minus C is still less than B plus minus C. If we add or subtract C on both the sides, inequality does not change. Then you saw AC will remain less than BC if C is positive and the inequality changes. If it was less than, it becomes greater. If it is greater, it becomes less than if C is less than zero. Then you saw on inverting our inequality changes. If it is less than, it becomes greater. If it is greater, it becomes less than. We also saw some rules for our uh, modulus function. Two important ones which we did was the triangle inequality. mod of x plus y is less than equal to mod x plus mod of y and we saw mod of x less than c implies x is less than c greater than minus c and mod of x less than equal to c implies x is less than equal to c greater than equal to minus c. You have to remember modulus function means whatever is inside comes out positive. For my class notes, detailed explanation, you can visit my website prof Preeti .com. Go to courses. Under that, go to Remedial. You will find all the chapters there. You will find lot of exercises for practice with solutions. The next topic which we are going to do is solving inequalities. So the next topic is Solving inequalities. Now, all this homework which we did was to solve the inequalities, the much-awaited topic. Thank you so much, guys.